TV begins now. Welcome to Fairbury Speedway as we get set for the final night of the Falls Frenzy presented by Dyer's Top Rods here in the ML Performance iRacing Crown Jewel Series. We've got three big B mains to start the night, 20 laps apiece, and then we've got the 100 lapper to wrap things up here as we have another big weekend of action in the ML Performance iRacing Crown Jewel Series. And tonight we're at the mighty, mighty, not making Speedway in Illinois, but rather Fairbury Speedway, hashtag Falls as we get set to get things underway. Just another lap or two of practice here. As these drivers talk about practice, Alan Iverson would say, as we get set to go in a 20 lap, we'll have three 20 lap B mains. They're all gonna be running right here. If you're watching at DirtOnDirt.com's Facebook page, the TPLR Facebook page, the Full Velocity Racing Network Facebook page, and last but not least, and the Car Mafia Facebook page. We'll run them all through. It'll take us to switch in between. But three B mains, the 100 lap feature, and tonight, caution laps will not count in these B mains. They will count the first 50 laps of the feature. They won't count for the second 50 laps. And I'd love to see everybody already tuning in. Over 470 people. Give us a thumbs up, comments, likes. Things are kind of crazy during the B mains. I don't get to monitor things quite as much, but I'll try to catch some of your comments throughout the feature. We appreciate everybody supporting the action here tonight for the Falls Frenzy presented by Dyer's Top Rides. We'll have tomorrow night off, and then we come back eastbound and down on Monday and Tuesday night as we go to the legendary Williams Grove Speedway to get set for the Bern Heisel Racing Products Late Model National Open, the first ever there at Williams Grove Speedway for the ML Performance iRacing Crown Jewels Series. We'll have times being released here in the next day or so, so make sure to check out the ML Performance iRacing Crown Jewels Series page. Well, we mentioned this, it's going to be 20 laps the distance. We will take the top three out of this one as drivers get in the last few laps around this speedway. And i tell you what, I'm going to go ahead and tell you who is going to be starting where in this one. They get down to the end of practice and get set to grid these drivers for their feature, for their B main, I should say. The top three move on, 20 laps the distance. On the pole, it will be Mr. Caden Cornett, excuse me, Bowdy, the other Cade in the book. Cade Loudy is going to be on the pole, the Tennessee driver starting inside of row number one. That advance to the feature. Starting outside of row number one, it'll be Trey Kirk in car number 66. That driver coming to us out of Monroe, Georgia. Row number two will be Travis Creech out of Niles, Ohio in car 75. And to his outside, the Pennsylvania native out of Clarendon, Pennsylvania, Matthew Logan in car 41. Row two will be Scott Scott Burke in car number 27. That driver out of Mineral Ridge, Ohio. And to his outside, Barry Souter. Barry Souter and the 189, he hails from Washington, Illinois. Row number four will be Drew Weiser in car number 19. Weiser out of Reading, Pennsylvania. And to his outside, Caden Cornell. Driver's got his work cut out from tonight out of Willard, Missouri in cart number 50 entering this weekend fourth in the points and right now he's just trying to get into the big show and starting on the back road driver we did not see in action last night he's going to try to race in out of this 20 lap B main Christian Hanger and cart 29 the Winchester Tennessee driver in the Hanger's hardwood flooring entry nine cars 20 laps caution laps will not count and top three move on Cade Loudy Trey Kirk your front row as we talked about, Loudy was in a transfer spot for a lot of last night's feet. Uh, his uh, prelim got shuffled back after an accident. Missed it by one spot. He's on the pole. He's got Trey Kirk alongside. Pace truck pulls to the infield. We are going green off turn at number four. And we are underway in Falls here. We made it number one here tonight for the Falls Frenzy presented by Dyer's Top Rods. Kate Loudy leads him out of two down the back straightaway. Working lap number one. Second right now runs Trey. Runs Creech, actually, in the 75 car. Trey Kirk to his inside. Kirk will take the spot at the line. One on the board, 19 to go. And Cade Loudy has set sail early in this one. The Rogersville, Tennessee driver. And that MV suspension, JB Salvage entry as they tiptoe around that falls cushion. 
That movement's got the racetrack looking great here tonight. A lot of moisture early in the B main as they shoot rooster tails out of the corner, down the back straightaway, off into three and four. And Kate Wildy starting to stretch that advantage early in this one as we'll see the first caution on the speedway. We got one turned around back in the pack. And that may be the number 41 of Matthew Logan. We'll give signs and circle play. See, we tried to brought that caution out with two down, 18 to go. Looks like actually Creech goes around. And Matthew Logan, wrong place at the wrong time in car 41, turns it around, draws the caution. Two down, 18 to go. Aid Loudy leading the way, the Rogersville, Tennessee driver in car 126, that NB suspension entry. Trey Kirk sits back in second. And your third and final transfer as they run right now, Scott Burke, the Ohio driver out of Mineral Ridge, Ohio. Scott Burke sits in third. Again, getting them lined up between, behind the pace truck. Pay, the caution laps will not count here in these first three B mains. They will count for the first 50 laps of the feature as the pace truck should put a pull to the infield. Yes, sir, it does. Aid Loudy will stomp the loud pedal out of turn. Number four brings us back to the green flag in car number 126, the MB Customs race car. We are back underway. Loudy goes to the cushion, train Kirk to the inside in car set 66. They go side by side for the lead out of two down the back straight away. Off into turns three and four. Loudy bounces it off the cushion. We have a new leader. Yes, sir, you will. Trey Kirk goes to the top spot. He leads lap number four by about five hundredths of a second as Loudy now finds himself back in second. In the third spot, hang on to it. Scott Burke almost looped it around, and that allows Cornell to go by on the high side. Kate Cornell puts the Rick Cooper Motorsports number 50 into that third and final transfer. Racetrack looking good early in this one as we work lap number six. This 20 lapper with three moving on to tonight's Paul's Frenzy presented by Dyer's Top Rides. Loudy now challenging for the lead, trying to get it back away from Kate, from Trey Kirk. Kirk down low, Loudy up top, Loudy catches the concrete. That allows Kirk to pull away out of turn four down the front straightaway. Good stuff at the front of the field. Back in third, here comes Kate Cornell in car number 50. He's got Barry Sauter, Christian Hanger from the back row right behind him. Three wide for the lead through turns three and four. Drag race back to the line, leader of that lap. That's gonna be Kate Loudy back to the top spot. Eight laps down, Loudy to the lead, and now here comes Cornell. He goes after Trey Kirk, and he's gonna go Loudy as well. His racetrack, the group is moving around as we approach the halfway mark. Nine laps complete, and this is a good one early on. And two different leaders. Cornell trying to make it three as he goes to the inside of Loudy. For the lead out of turn number four, the leader at the halfway mark. Who's it going to be? We go to the scoring panel, and it is going to be Loudy by three thousandths of a second. Cornell in second, and now up to third from dead last, Kate Cornell. Good battles right now. These five cars went after three spots. Only three of them move on as Cornell takes the lead with 11 in the books. We've now had three different leaders in this one. Three different leaders with Kate Cornell out in front in car number 50. That driver coming to us out of Willard, Missouri. One win already on the year at DirtTraff.com. Rick Cooper Motorsports number 50. That win came a week ago. A week ago tonight at Felicia Speedway Park. Please, Dylan Hauser picked up the split wins. Right now, he's driving away from the pack. He started back in eighth, took the lead on lap number 10. Loudy sits in second, battle for that third position. Barry Sauter's got it right now as Trey Kirk has found himself from the lead to second to out of the show. Car 81 of Barry Sauter sits in third. Laps ticking away in this one, just five to go off turn number four. Now the battle's heating up for that second spot. Hey, Loudy's got it. 81 of Sauter once by. Meanwhile, Trey Kirk back and forth, running out of time, along with Hanger, Creech, Logan, Weiser, and Burke. Only three move on, and those drivers are running out of time. No provisionals here tonight. At a turn before, just three laps remain for Caden Cornell. Hey, Loudy holds on to second. Sauter back in the third spot. Interesting that right now these guys digging around the low side. We saw most of the races last night, the moves made on the high side. I think Cornell digging that moisture the whole way on the bottom. Two laps to go now for Caden Cornell. Second is Cade Loudy, but he's got company soldered to the inside. Good battle for second as they work down the back straightaway up into three and four. Caden Cornell, the Show Me State drivers, they show him the white flag at a turn number four one more time around the speedway and be made number one here tonight for the Falls Frenzy, presented by Dyer's Top Rides. Three and four for the final time. Checkered flag is displayed. The winner of B-Main number one, give it to Caden Cornell. Kate Loudy comes home in second. Barry Sauter in third. Trey Kirk, Christian Hanger, everybody else 
done for the night. Taking the third and final transfer in cart number 18, the driver that comes to us out of Washington, Illinois, it's Barry Sauter. In second, out of Rogersville, Tennessee, the 126 of Cade Loudy. And your winner after starting eighth, Caden Cornell in car number 50. He's in the dirt draft. Hoover Motorsports, Choate Farms, Hatfield Racing Engines, Lucas Oil, number 50. Caden Cornell moves off to the main event. Those three drivers move on. We're going to switch servers and get ready for B-Main number two. When we come back, we're here at the Falls Frenzy, presented by Dyer's Top Rods at Fairbury Speedway in Fairbury, Illinois, and you're watching it all live here on the Full Velocity Racing Network. Shelton on the call. Todd Stanton with the Full Velocity Racing Network switching tonight, doing all the producing, doing a great job. We appreciate everybody tuned in tonight. Follow us on social media. Been enjoying seeing a few of the questions. I see Robert Tolley wonder if they're selling 50-50. They are, but 100% of it goes to the producer and the announcer here tonight. Bad news, but we do hope you buy tickets. Uh, we just saw the first B-Main run, and Kate Cornell came from eighth, Missouri driver, picked up that win in second. It was Kate Loudy. He led early, and then Barry Sauter did a great job charging up to the third spot. Big deal for Kate Cornell to race his way in. He had bad luck last night. He's fourth in the point standings, just five points out of the lead, entering tonight's Falls Frenzy presented by Dyer's Top Rods. So he obviously wanted to get in. Everybody trying to go for that $1,000 points fund at the end of this. 1000 to win, I should say. Big points fund. 1000 for the champion, 800 for second, $500 for third, 250 for fourth, and 225 for fifth. Again, enjoy everybody checking in tonight. I see the voice of Fairbury Speedway, Mike Norris. He's checking it out. He made his iRacing debut last night with the mods at Fairbury. Hopefully, we get Mike on here with me next week. Uh, he did a great job last night. He and Tommy Rowe Jr. Quick listen to that. I see 
The Hall of Famer, Jimmy Mars, is checked into this one. And hey, man, he's got to be checking in. His son, Sam Mars, trying to raise his weight into the main event. And Sam is going to be coming up in front of those beat mains as well. So a lot of good cars trying to get into the main event here tonight. And last few laps of practice here in this set before we go green, as it looks like one, two, three, four, five, nine cars, 20 laps. Cautions will count in this one. Top three move on. Everybody else done for the night. They'll have to try it on Monday and Tuesday night. We head to Williams Grove Speedway for the late model national open presented by Burn Heisel Racing Products. That'll be live again on the Dirt on Dirt Facebook page, Old Bossy Racing Dirt Network Facebook page, and the MSR Mafia. Tonight, very happy to be on the Team BLR Facebook page as well. So, laps away from practice for the guys ready to go with the second B main. Three more to the feature. We'll have one more B coming up after this one. And then tonight's 100 lap feature presented by Dyer's Top Rides. First 50 laps, caution laps will count. Second 50 laps, they will not. $250 to the winner tonight. And all important championship point standings. Trying to get those points to get a chance that $1,000 champions accolade as well as the bragging rights of being the first champion in this series. We got some good cars in this in this set. In fact, the driver second in the standings, just one point out of the lead, Dylan Hauser. Finds himself on a B main tonight after things got a little crazy last night. He starts third in that to get things underway. Race control getting settled in, making sure everybody that can make the call does. Go ahead and tell you who's going to be starting where in this one. Starting on the pole will be Paul Mohawk, Tennessee's Brad Dyer in car 56, the HRE Motorsports, Carrots, Custard, and Hamburgers entry. And starting to his outside. Be Tyler Hurst. Tyler Hurst gets to start outside of road number one in car 222, the Brumbelow Stud Service entry. You kind of love that. Brumbelow's Stud Service. That's right. Turning inside of road number two, it'll be Dylan Hauser. He comes to us out of Ocala, Florida, the Slick Sim Sport entry. Currently second in the standings. And to his outside, another driver that have his work cut out for him tonight out of Broadhead, Kentucky. Drew Hopkins, the HRE Motorsports and Soil Entry. Hopkins second, excuse me, third back in Werderville in the Firecracker finale on Tuesday night. Turning inside of road three to be Patrick Green in cart number eight out of Mount Holly, North Carolina. The Draco Springs by SRI, SRI Performance Entry to his outside, Aaron Brumbelo. Brumbelo coming to us out of Hartzell, Alabama. The Hankers Hardwood Flooring, Brumbelo Stud Service 101. Moving back to road number four, scheduled to be Caleb McLaughlin out of Belmont, North Carolina. Real world racer in the Mike's Body Shop of Dallas entry into his outside. It'll be Zachary Anthony, driver that led his prelim last night before bad luck got him. And the factory esports entry out of Erie, PA. He'll be in car 48. Road number five, scheduled to be Blaze Burwell. That driver comes to us out of Mount Vernon, Illinois, and he will be in car number 44 into his outside, Zach Lee and Hardy. It's like Zach not going to make the call, the Cartersville, Georgia driver. Next row back, it's going to be Jimmy Gustin in the 019, that driver out of Marshalltown, Iowa, not seeing him on the grid, nor do we see Trent Ivey out of Union, South Carolina. And have nine cars officially going at it, nine cars, and 20 laps the distance, top three move on. This is be main number two of three. The lineup on the grid, Brad Dyer, the Mohawk Tennessee driver on the pole in car 56, joined by the number two car. That will be Tyler Hurst. Tyler Hurst starting on the front row. Three of these drivers will move on. Everybody else gets to watch the feature with you and I as they're going to make one more lap around the speedway. Trying to get confirmation if we've got Gunnar Sullivan's prom rib sandwiches or straight away. If you ever go to Fairbury Speedway, it is a must. Gunner cooks about a thousand of these things throughout the weekend. And man, I tell you what, I could take one right now because we haven't had dinner yet. So that sounds awfully good. Cool seeing all of the Fairbury people checking in, watching back home as we get set to go green. Pace truck to the infield. It's Dyer and Hurst, your front row. Dyer's on the loud pedal. As we go green, he gets a great start. Hurst, not so much. Hauser's going to jump up top. He'll go to the top shelf and go to second immediately as they work off into three and four. Right through the middle, it's Brad Dyer, your leader. He'll lead lap one of this 20 lapper. Bowser sits in second, Hurst in the hot seat, back in third. Now Hopkins takes it away from him. Hopkins up into third as they work out of turn at number four. They come right to complete lap number two of this 20 lapper, and Brad Dyer leads the way. Dylan Hauser in pursuit. Hauser had a fast race car. He led last night, though, got an in the line penalty after a battle for the lead with Zachary Anthony. Finds himself here in the B main, and he is hard charging right now in that second spot. Hopkins holds on to third. 
caught in the first B main. The driver's work in the middle of the racetrack. And Thane Dill in the second B main. A lot of moisture right through the middle. That's where those drivers are letting it eat. Back in the pack, Hopkins sits in fourth, Hurst in fifth, McLaughlin in sixth, Ruffalo trying to make noise up top, and now he'll move down to the middle of the racetrack as we work on lap number five of this 25, this 20 lap with the top three moving on. Again, we appreciate everybody checking in tonight. Butch Mays, my buddy out of Oklahoma, Dan Rice, announcer out of Ohio, checking in to watch the broadcast. We hope you enjoy what you're seeing. Give us shares, likes, and comments if you like what you see. We're going to have one more B-Main after this one, and then we're going to have the 100-lap finale coming up from Falls. Again, don't forget, coming up on Tuesday, Monday and Tuesday, will be Williams Grove Speedway by Burn Heisel Race Products. Appreciate it. Brian, Brandon, Jim, and the whole gang helping us put that one on. So far in this one, Brad Dyer has been marching in charge out front. Four tenths of a second is lead, but Hauser prowling up top. Brad Dyer's been working through the middle and low side of the racetrack. Hauser's up top in that Bobby Pierce line in Fairbury, letting her eat. And now the caution is out. That's going to race any lead for anybody with eight laps complete. And we had one going around, and that will draw the caution. Like maybe Dalton Connor drawing the caution. And yep, Connor in car number two. He'll tag the back of the pack. We have eight laps down, 12 to go. Tennessee's Brad Dyer leads the way over Florida's Dylan Hauser and Kentucky's Drew Hopkins back in third. Got a few people in the chat room asking how they get involved in the ML Performance iRacing Crown Jewel Series. It is full for all the series. They had roughly 64 drivers buy in. They were going to do 50, and then they expanded to 64. Depending on how the quarantines go and the tracks can get back to racing, we may carry this into May. Matt Logan and the gang over at ML Performance stepping up, putting something together for the racers, the fans. Right now we have a race next Monday and Tuesday at Williams Grove Speedway. We'll have Wednesday off, then Thursday, Friday, Saturday. We're going to go to the Sprint Car Capital of the World, Knoxville Raceway for the SJ Motorsports, Knoxville Sim Late Model Nationals. Then we'll have a night off, and right now, tentatively, the final two nights of this event will be the dirt track at Charlotte, ML Performance's home grid there on April 27th and 28th. Stay tuned to the ML Performance Facebook page, the ML Performance Crown Jewel Series Facebook page as details on upcoming series may be released as we find out when and where we won't and will be able to race as the greens back out. Ten laps in the books, halfway home. It's Dyer, your leader. Here comes Hopkins down low. Hauser grabs the concrete up top. Hauser's got to be careful right now. He is second in the point standings, and he's in danger of missing the show as Brumpelow, the Alabama driver, digging down low, and Brumpelow two for the price of one. He's going to shoot from fourth to second as we complete lap 11, now working lap 12 down the back straight away. Hauser gets back up on the top side. He goes to work. He'll take second away from Rumble. Rumble back into the third position. Right now, it is Hauser holding on to second. It's a hornet's nest. Dyer driving away from the field, but back in second on back, it's good. As Rumble is going to take second away from Hauser. Hauser back to third. Hopkins in fourth. McLaughlin in fifth. Working lap number 14. Dyer on a Sunday drive out front. He's got an eight tenths of a second advantage. Eternity here. Fairbury beating it, banging back in the back. Hang on to it. Hauser's going to go upside down after contact with McLaughlin. And we've got yellow on the speedway and points implication supreme as Dylan Hauser goes for Mr. Toad's wild ride after contact with McLaughlin upside down, down the front straightaway with just six laps remaining. And that is big time as your leader. Your, excuse me, your second place runner in the points. A little bit of contact with McLaughlin and coming down through there, he just gets his clock cleaned on his roof. Wow, big time bad break for Dylan Hauser. It's upside down with just six laps remaining. Brad Dyer, the Tennessee driver, leads the way. Hopkins in second, McLaughlin back in third. It was a topsy-turvy night last night for Dylan Hauser and tonight it continues. Pace truck prepares to pull to the end. Nope, I'm going to take it around one more time here at Fairbury. Quarter mile oval. That beautiful black prairie dirt on this racetrack. Again, if you've never been there, favorite track in America, you got to check it out tonight. We're at the NL Performance iRacing Crown Jewel Series. The pace truck pulls to the infield. It's Dyer and Hopkins at your top two. McLaughlin in the hot seat back in third. Five laps to decide this one. Five to go as Hopkins catches the concrete down in one and two, and that allows Dyer to pull away ever so slightly. Meanwhile, McLaughlin and Rumpelow went side by side for third. McLaughlin in car 83. 
ball back to fourth. Ruffalo held that spot by about five thousandths of a second at the line. Laps ticking away in this one. We're side by side for the top spot. Drew Hopkins tiptoeing around the top side of the speedway. Will he take the lead at the line? He will. Hopkins to the lead by three hundredths of a second. Now here comes Dyer back to his inside. McLaughlin back in third. They race back to two to go. Good stuff for the lead. Good stuff for the final transfer. Only three of these drivers move on. Hopkins holds the lead at the line. The field racing back to the white flag. McLaughlin in the third spot, side by side for the lead. Dyer down low. Tennessee and Kentucky border wars for the win here at B Mate number two. Presented by Dyer's Top Rides in the Falls Frenzy. Final time. They work down the back straightaway, off into turns three and four. Who is going to take the top three spots? Your winner out of Broadhead, Kentucky. It'll be car 157 of Drew Hopkins. Brad Dyer comes home in second. Caleb McLaughlin in third. And that was a good one. Your third and final transfer out of Belmont, North Carolina, the Mike's Body Shop of Dallas entry for Caleb McLaughlin. Second will go to Mohawk, Tennessee driver Brad Dyer in the HRE Motorsports car 56. And your winner in car 157, Drew Hopkins out of Rodhead, Kentucky, the HRE Motorsports and Soil, Karen's Custard and Hamburgers, All Dirt in Kentucky, Precision Gas Plumbing, Team Friday and Dirt All Access 157. That was a dandy as now we get set to step aside. When we come back, we are going to be in server number three, third and final B main tonight for the Falls Frenzy presented by Dyer's Top Rides. You're watching the ML Performance iRacing Crown Jewel Series here on the Full Velocity Racing Network. Hang tight. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to Fairbury Speedway as we get set for the third and final B Main here at the Falls Frenzy presented by Dyer's Top Rides on the Full Velocity Racing Network. My name is Vince Shelton on the call, joined by Todd Stanton, who's switching and producing, doing a great job once again here tonight. Third and final B Main as these guys get a few laps, 20 laps will be the distance. Top three will move on. Everybody else done for the night, and then we'll get the server loaded for the 100 lapper. 250 bucks to win here tonight and get those championship points. And all major championship implications at that last one. Dylan Hauser entered the night one point out of the lead behind Kendall Tucker and got upside down in that B main. He did not transfer. That was a big deal. Drew Hopkins picking up the win in B main number two. That was a big deal as well because he was tied for second with Hauser. Hauser had the nose, the nose on the spot, the edge, I should say, because he won at Volusia Speedway Park last Saturday night. So Hopkins just got in. We saw Kate Cornell win B main number one. He was fourth in points entering tonight. A lot of guys at the top of the points trying to race their way in. Zachary Anthony did not get into the show. He was sixth in the points. Trent Ivey not making the call tonight as we get ready for this one. More drivers trying to guarantee a shot at the Popes, as well as tonight's Falls Frenzy presented by Dyer's Top Rides. Again, glad to see everybody checking in. We're going to build back up. We're over 700 viewers in just one of these Facebook lives and Facebook broadcasts that we have going. And it's live tonight on Dirt on Dirt, the Full Velocity Racing Network, Team BLR on MSR Mafia's Facebook page. Make sure to give us likes, comments, and shares as we get ready for the third and final beat main. Looks like eight drivers are making the call in this one. As look out, a little beat banging here in warm-up laps. Easy, guys, as we get set to go. 20 laps, caution laps will not count. In the big 100 lapper coming up next, caution laps will count for the first 50. They will not count in the final 50. We want to thank all of our sponsors of the series, Bulletproof Tees, Mert Heisel Racing Components, Laser Chassis, and Pieces Dirt Draft, Colin Signs, s &J Motorsports, SRI Performance, Draco Racing, Weir's Machine Racing Products, Hoker Trucking, I Race Wrap, all sponsors helping out with the series. Of course, Builder Signs as well. And a shout out to Todd Stanton, everybody at Full Velocity Race Network. So eight drivers have made their way into this server. We will take three of them. Three drivers will move on. Last few laps of their practice. Took a second to get this server up. The other two are already up, so we're letting these drivers get them dialed in. Kind of interesting that in the first two, we saw those pretty dominant low in the middle. Now, Hopkins got rolling on the top side in the last one, but most part last night, all the races were won on the top. Tonight, racetrack has been much wider and good stuff. And you got some good cars in this one. Very, very regular Austin Friedman car 89. He'll be in this one, the Dyer's Top Rods entry. Got Howard Weaver in this one as well. He'll be starting deep in the pack. One to watch. The Zero Seven, the Crossville, Tennessee driver, one of the great guys. The guys that comes into us from over in Team DLR. So tell you what, we'll go ahead and tell you who's going to be starting where in this one. Is on the pole. It'll be Jordan Mitchell in car number 13, the Broad Top City, Pennsylvania driver, the True Speed, of course, number 13. It's going to start alongside. It'll be Zach Stroop. Zach Stroop, the North Carolina driver. He'll be behind the wheel of the number two car, the SRI Performance House car. We're going to start inside of road number two and not seeing him. It's going to be Devin McLean and Devin not making the call here tonight. The Illinois racer outside of road number two scheduled to be Austin Friedman. will be there. Austin, the Dyer's top ride century, the number nine. Out of four still. Road number three, looking for Richie Gustin, the Marshalltown, Iowa driver, not going to make the call tonight. And Kaz Buchinski, we're not going to have all of road three there. It'll look like it's the front Royal Virginia driver not making the call either. Road number four, he is here, will be Jimmy Wall in the 09 car. Wall hailing out of Rochester, PA, and turning alongside a wall. Uh, it's going to be Gregory Carrico. He's not in the server, so we won't have him with us. Moving back another row, Howard Weaver is there. Weaver will move up a little bit. The Crossville, Tennessee driver, the Team VLR 07 entry to his outside. Ricky Thorpe Jr., RTJ, the Arizona native, now residing in Adel, Iowa. He makes the call in the Hoker Trucking Dark Horse chassis. Number back to see if anybody else in the schedule is going to be there. And we'll see Corey Gordon. Corey did not race with us last night, so he's going to be starting at the back of the pack. Charlotte, North Carolina driver in car number 23, the Dirt on Dirt house car. He's had some big wins already in iRacing over the past few weeks. But we'll his work cut out for him as he should be starting eighth on the grid in this one. As we've got just a couple of seconds left, it ticks away in practice, and we're calling him to the grid as we get set to go 20 laps. Number three, third and final B main. The grid will be set for the Falls Frenzy presented by Dyer's Top Rods after this one. 
front row, Jordan Mitchell in car number 13, the Pennsylvania driver, the True Speed Motorsports Entry, and Zach Stroop, North Carolina driver in car number two, RI Performance House Cars. They put them all on the grid. You see the aerial shot, and we appreciate everybody tuning in on the different Facebook pages, and we hope that you've enjoyed what you've seen so far, having a good time with it. You see the grid there presented by 3D. Builder Media Designs helping make this be possible. All these other great sponsors. And don't forget to go to dirtdraft.com and put code iRacing in. You will get 50% off your first month and you can pick your iRacing grids and have some fun with this and compete for great prizes over dirtdraft.com. Great supporter of a performance iRacing crown jewels. All right, so we're gonna line back up as eight cars have made the call. All eight cars on the grid. Pace truck should roll off here in a second. 20 laps the distance. Top three will move on. Pace truck rolls off the grid. So Jordan Mitchell, the PA driver on the pole, joined by the North Carolina Zach Stroop alongside part number two. A lot of great looking wraps on these race cars. Back there at row number two, Austin Friedman, nine. A lot of generations of that Friedman family, a lot of success at Fairbury Speedway. Austin on making his name there, and he joins us in the virtual world here tonight. The pace track should pull to the infield down the back straightaway as the field rolls through, turns one and two, 20 laps the distance, top three move on. Caution flags will not, caution laps will not count. There will be caution flags as needed, but as Jordan Mitchell, Zach Stroop coming to the green flag out of four, start looks good, and we are underway at Fairbury. Jordan Mitchell, a little wait to get on the throttle. That allowed Stroop to get a whole shot. We see Stroop can capitalize off two down the back straightaway. Zach Stroop to the lead. Jordan Mitchell back to second. Friedman digging hard down low in the 89 car, trying to get that second spot. Lap number one, give it to Friedman for second. Mitchell just about dialed it out. We got beaten and banging back in the pack. Staying green so far as everybody gets appointed the right way. Out front, it's Stroop, your leader. Now Austin Friedman to inside. Will we have a new leader? Yes, sir, you will. Austin Friedman leads lap number two. Takes over the top spot. Stroop back to second. Jordan Mitchell in third. Hang on to it. Howard Weaver goes for a little excursion through the infield, and that is going to cost the Crossville Tennessee driver a chance of getting in right now. So he's going to need a caution to re bunch this field as your top three. Starting to stretch it out. And as I say that, Corey Gordon from the back of the pack. The Charlotte, North Carolina driver in car 23. Digging hard. Goes to the inside of Jordan Mitchell for that third and final transfer. Only three of these drivers move on. We're down the back straightaway. Out of turn number four now. And five laps complete. 15 to go. It's Derek Friedman, your leader. Zach Stroop in second. Jordan Mitchell in third. But he's got Corey Gordon knocking on the back door. Again, welcome to everybody watching on Facebook from around the world here tonight. As we have the Falls Frenzy presented by Dyer's Top Rods at Fairbury Speedway. Business heating up now for that third spot as Gordon trying to capitalize on Mitchell grabbing the concrete. Out front, it is all Austin Friedman. That time at the line, who was in third? And it was Jordan Mitchell by a couple hundredths of a second. Very tight battle right now for that third and final transfer. The first two B mains, the bottom and the middle was really good. This one, Austin Friedman's been letting her eat up on that falls cushion right now as he works out a two past the bus down the back straightaway. Welcome everybody tuned in watching. Mike Tooley from Tool, Tools Auto Sales. I appreciate your support of Fairbury Speedway. We're glad you're watching here tonight. Corey Gordon right now took the third spot the last time at the line, and now he'll take it for good as Jordan Mitchell finds himself on the outside looking in as we race back to the cross flags. Ten laps down, ten to go, and it's Friedman, Stroop, and Gordon. Your top three cars as Mitchell's on the outside looking in. Ricky Thornton Jr. back in fifth running out of time and he's got Rod Tucker back there behind him. Tucker a late entry as well. He didn't get race with us last night. Jimmy Wall and Howard Weaver out of this party. Off turn at number four, your top three stretching it out side by side. Back there for the fifth spot, but again, only three move on. So right now, Jordan Mitchell's got to find his way to get around Corey Gordon if he's going to get into the go here tonight. Austin Friedman has driven away from him. It is a glorified practice session for the driver out of Forest, Illinois right now in car 89. Has a 1.5 second advantage over Stroop. Corey Gordon now stretching it out over Jordan Mitchell for that final transfer.
Laps going away in this one as we, out of turn number four, just have five laps remaining. Austin Friedman leading the way in that HRE Motorsports, Ingleside Tire and Auto, Pope Joy Plumbing, Heating and Electric entry. And like that, the giant lead, 1.8 seconds, it's gone. Caution on the speedway. Caution, doubt with five laps to go. And it's Friedman, Stroop, and Gordon, your top three. Builder Media Designs Caution flies on the speedway. Look at the Weir's Machine and Racing products instantly have happened and I'm really sure what brought that caution out like it may have been the 13 of Jordan Mitchell trying to get back into a transfer spot and issue that driver may have been what drew the caution no he was still rolling so caution waves one way or another we come back to the green we're only gonna have five laps remaining Austin Friedman your leader I know a lot of the Fairbury faithful tuned in here tonight and they're watching their boy out in front in car number 89 knows how to get around the racetrack in the real world, in the virtual world. He's showing them how it's done. At a 1.9 second advantage, Stroop in second. Corey Gordon back in third. And now Jordan Mitchell, this is the shot he needs. He's got five laps to figure it out. Ricky Thornton Jr. brought out that caution in car number 20. Heads to the back of the pack. Base truck to the infield. We should have five to go at the line when we come around. Top three move on. Uh, I'm going to take him around one more time, it looks like. Around one more time, getting Rod Tucker to the back of the pack as well. Austin Freeman leading car 89, and then it's Stroop and Gordon. Illinois boy leading a couple of North Carolina drivers and sitting the second and third transfers. Pennsylvania's Jordan Mitchell on the outside looking in. Green flag is out. We are back underway. Five to go. Five phalanges in the air as they go three wide for second. As Stroop's got it, Mitchell's trying to find a way up there. Now Corey Gordon, good run. Gordon digging right around the hub. Those famous Fairbury tires on the infield. Nobody pushed him out under caution, so all's good. Nobody, no reason to get upset. We're gonna stay clean and green down the back straightaway. Corey Gordon inches ahead for second. Now Stroop pounds the cushion in car number two. Get that deuce car rolling. Good battle for that third, that second trans, second and third spots, only three move on. Jordan Mitchell watching it unfold in front of him. They race back to the line, two laps to go out of turn number four for Austin Friedman and car number 89. At the line, Stroop back into second by a couple hundreds over Gordon. Down the back straightaway, your field comes to the white flag. White flag in the air, one more time around the speedway for Austin Friedman and car number 89. He leads by six tenths of a second, making seven tenths on the back straightaway final time through three and four easy win for austin friedman who's going to be second at the line Stroop and gordon give it to zach Stroop. corey gordon comes home in third jordan mitchell rod tucker everybody else done for the night your third and final transfer out of charlotte north carolina will be corey gordon in car number 23 out of concord north carolina it's zach Stroop and the number two and you're a winner out of forest illinois the hre motorsports ingleside tire and auto pope joy plumbing heating and electric livingston stone company emberton plumbing and heating and freeburg racing components number 89 for the dyer's top rod entry of austin friedman out of forest illinois he takes the win we are set for tonight's main event. We are going to step aside. When we come back here on the Full Velocity Racing Network, we are going to be live 100 laps the distance in the Falls Frenzy presented by Dyer's Top Rides. You are watching live here on Facebook. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to Fairbury Speedway tonight on the Full Velocity Racing Network as the ML Performance I Racing Crown Jewel Series gets ready to go 100 lap at Hashtags Falls and the Falls Frenzy presented by Dyer's Top Rides. 250 bucks to the winner, championship points all on the line. 25 cars that will be going into action in this battle. The first 50 laps of the feature, caution laps will count. The second 50, they will not. You see the field out there right now, getting the racetrack rolled in, getting it ready to go. Let's go ahead and tell you who's going to be starting where. This 25 car grid on the pole tonight. It's a current points leader and card double zero out of Mount Airy, North Carolina. The Swindell Speed Lab entry for Kendall Tucker. To his outside, he comes to us out of Warren, South Carolina. The Collins signs one shot scrap recycle entry. It's Brooks Trammell and card one. Back to row number two. It'll be Joe Lusk, the Linden, Pennsylvania driver, the Jim Beaver Esports General Tire, car number 20, and starting to Lusk's outside, Huey Quillen, and car number four, the Jeremiah Kentucky entry. Back in row number three, the winner from Warnerville Speedway back on Tuesday night with the ML Performance Crown Jewel Series, it's Blake Majulis, the Asheville, New York driver, and Swindell Speedway have sim seats, car 127. Bring to his outside in car number 99. This driver comes to us out of East Palestine, Ohio, the NWD Signs and Graphics entry for Maddie Watkins. Moving back to row number four, coming to us from Covington, Louisiana. He'll be in car number 68. It's Bryce Fontelroy, the factory eSports entry, and to his outside, the New Mexico native now residing in Shreveport, Louisiana, the Lucas Oil Black Diamond House car. It's Garrett Alverson in car one. Moving back to row number five, coming to us from Flemingsburg, Kentucky, the Estes Energy Systems, Hangers Hardwood, Roy Gray's car from the number 41 of Austin McGlone. Starting to McGlone's outside, the New Jersey transplant, now living in Lincolnton, North Carolina, to be in the DirtOnDirt.com house car, the number 44 of John Ruggiero Jr. Moving back to row number six, starting on the inside, out of Clay City, Kentucky, the J Construction and Restoration Performance Bodies entry for Connor Mead. It's Raymond Mead's outside, and 
it'll be Tyler Walton. Tyler Walton aboard car number 38, the American Bulldoze Company, Watson family from our race car. Back in row number seven, it'll be the son of Dirt Lake Model Hall of Famer, Jimmy Mars, and Sam Mars in car number 28. Sam behind the wheel of the Vite Specialty Contract, Monco Waste Management King has this race car. To his outside, it'll be Jeremy Still. Jeremy Still behind the wheel of car number two, the York, South Carolina driver, the Excel grading and waterproofing, Brian and Sons Lawn Care, car two. Moving back to row number eight at a Heinemann VA, it's 14-year-old Drake Troutman. Drake Troutman behind the wheel of car number seven, the Smith Transport RF RFI Resources of car seven. Starting outside of row number eight in car number 119, comes to us out of Conneaut, Ohio, it's Bud Watson. Bud Watson and the Burn Heisel Race Components, Laser Chassis, one night. Road number nine will be Caden Cornell. Caden coming to us out of Willard, Missouri, the DirtDraft.com. Rick Hoover Motorsports number four is outside. And the 157 will be Drew Hopkins. Drew Hopkins, the driver from Broadhead, Kentucky, in the HRE Motorsports and Soil Entry. Moving back to road number 10 out of Forest, Illinois. You just saw him win a B-Main. It's Austin Friedman in the HRE Motorsports Ingleside Tire and Auto Race Car. And to his outside, Cade Lowdy in car 126, the Rogersville, Tennessee driver and the MVP Pension JV Salvage Race Car. Moving back to road number 11 in the number 56 entry, it's Brad Dyer from Mohawk, Tennessee in the HRE Motorsports Karen's Custard and Hamburgers entry. And to his outside, Zach Stroop. Back coming to us out of Concord, North Carolina, the SRI Performance House Car. Back in row 12, it'll be Barry Sauter in car number 18. Sauter out of Washington, Illinois, in the dirt track and factory eSports entry. And to his outside, Caleb McLaughlin out of Belmont, North Carolina, in the Mike's Body Shop of Dallas, Clark's Tree Service, car 83. And on the back row with the firmest way to go out of Charlotte, North Carolina, in car number 23, sponsored by Dirt on Dirt, it's going to be Corey Gordon, Corey Gordon in car 23. 25 cars, 100 laps, 250 bucks to the winner, and we talked about the points battle and how it heats up tonight. Well, the guy that was second in the points, Dylan Hauser, did not make the show tonight. One point out of the lead and not in the show tonight. Kendall Tucker, your pole sitter, he leads the standings by one marker over Drew Hopkins. And Kate Cornell deep in the pack tonight. Bryce Fonelroy, Zachary Anthony. That'd be your top five with Hauser getting getting shuffled down the list. And hey, Anthony does as well. As we are underway in this one, green flag flies, and we're underway in this main event as they work through three and four. Got one and two down the back straight away, three and four. Lap number one, score it to Brooks Trammell. Brooks Trammell jumping to the lead. Kendall Tucker back in second. Three and four now, battle for the lead off turn number four. Tucker trying to get it away from Trammell at the line. Do you have a new leader? No, it's still Trammell by a nose, but Tucker takes it down the back straightaway. Three turns, three and four, working lap number three of this 100 lap or this tight quarter mile bull ring. Second leader of the event, Kendall Tucker, the current points leader to the lead. Trammell, Willen, Watkins, Lusk, that's your top five early in this one. And Movers and Shakers back in the pack trying to find where they want to be. Kendall Tucker leads the way in caution waves, caution on the speedway with four laps complete. Caution on the Speedway presented by Milner Designs. Tucker, Trammell, and Quillen in your top three. Pretty eight of Taylor Walton going around and that draws the caution. As we had drivers all over this quarter mile bull ring as you expected, hashtag falls and it was Taylor Walton drawing the caution, looped it around at the entry to turn number three. So we'll take a second to catch our breath. Again, these caution laps do count early in this one. Caution laps do count. Once we get to lap 50 on, though, they will not. Working lap number seven right now under caution. It's Kendall Tucker, current leader, the driver out of Mount Airy, North Carolina. Current points leaders. The pace truck pulls to the infield. Little Tom wasted. Great job by this Team VLR crew here tonight. Tucker brings us back to the green flag. Trammell in second. Lead lap number seven. Seven down. 93 laps remain. With Tucker working the low to middle side, he slides up the speedway out of two. Down the back straightaway. Trammell knocking on the back door. Now Matty Watkins will go to work on the cushion in car 99 off turn number four. Sport another lap to Kendall Tucker, but he's got heavy company. Here comes Trammell to the inside in car one. Tucker leading the way. That'd be a little difficult to lead here in Fairbury. Not the one right behind you is trying. And lap traffic can definitely get interesting if we can long enough as we work lap number 10 out of two down the back straightaway with Tucker Trammell Watkins Austin McGlone from ninth to fourth already 
and Majula sits in fifth. He was the winner at Warner Mill Speedway just a couple of nights ago. And right now he finds himself back up into the four spot as McGlone falls to fifth. Out front, Kendall Tucker's getting his feet under him, crunching it out. That time at the line, six tenths of a second, second advantage over Trammell. Does Kendall Tucker have for the top spot? Watkins sits back in third, but puts in fourth, and it's McGlone, Ruggiero in sixth. Quillen Lusk, Fauntleroy, Troutman, your top ten. Then it's Sam Mars, Garrett Alverson, Kane Lowdy, Corey Gordon, and Bud Watson. That's your top 15 early in this one. Out front, Tucker leads the way as now Watkins comes under fire from Majulis. Majulis takes third away from Manny Watkins as the caution waves with 14 laps complete. 14 on the board, and we have got a Milner Designs caution flag. Kendall Tucker will see his roll slowed by that. Five tenths of a second, the advantage for Kendall Tucker before that caution flag flew on the speedway. That's going to be still drawing the caution, Jason Phil. Part number two, so that draws the caution. And again, counting caution laps here in the first 50 to second 50. They will not count. That 15 laps complete. A little part of that caution that comes out on the speedway. You see car number two catching back up to the tail of the pack. Jeremy Stokes, excuse me, work in South Carolina. So we get a second to catch our breath and get this one back underway. We lap number 16 of this 100 lapper in Fairbury Speedway in Fairbury, Illinois. The Hopkins and Steele got together on that instant replay and barrel rolled it about four times. Pace truck pulls to the infield down the back straightaway. We'll go green off turn at number four. 17 laps complete and we're back underway at Fairbury Speedway with tonight's Falls Frenzy presented by Dyer's Top Rides. And now the jewel is to the inside of Matty. Excuse me, to the, goes for a bid for the lead and inside of Trammell. And now he's getting it inside of Kendall Tucker for the top spot as he takes second away from Trammell. Does the 127 of Blake Majulis on the prowl? Kendall Tucker battled it out for the lead at Warnerville a few nights ago, and it was Majulis taking the lead for the win. Tucker in second, and cautions, brief cautions, and no big surprise caution back out on the speedway. Flaps are complete, and we've got a Milner Designs caution back out on the racetrack. Drivers back in the pack getting together. And it'll be very Sauter drawing the caution. Build groups back up, and we're counting these caution laps early in this one. Washington, Illinois driver in car number 18 draws the caution. Out with 20 laps complete. We'll roll a few more off under caution, but again, the Team VLR crew doing a great job getting these lineups back together as fast as they can so we don't burn too many laps under caution. But counting the caution laps in the first 50 to keep the race from running too long, the final 50 laps cautions will not count. The Blake Majulis, he finished second in his prelim to Kendall Tucker last night. And Kendall Tucker said that's the first time he's outrun Majulis all year. And he's hoping to do it again here tonight. But now Majulis has climbed from fifth to the second spot. Behind only Kendall Tucker, Brooks Trammell back in third. He led early here. Matty Watkins in fourth. Austin McGlone from ninth to fifth. John Ruggiero Jr., tenth to sixth. Pace truck pulls to the infield. We'll go green off turn at number four. No, take him around one more time, it looks like to lap number 23. Hopefully this next time by the pace truck will pull to the infield down the back straightaway. This one back underway. The top is as good as it's been all night. The top, the three B mains, all the bottom and the middle being real good. Right now that top is really good. We'll see how this track changes in 100 laps. As the pace truck pulls to the infield, we can come back around. We'll have 24 laps complete at the line. 76 to go in tonight's Falls Frenzy presented by Dyer's Top Rides at Fairbury Speedway. We would have seen the green there. Pulling around. Check them around one more time, trying to get some guys back in the pack in line. Pace truck pulled to the infield the last time by. Right now, officials holding it up. There's the green. We're back underway on a turn number four. So we complete lap 25, one fourth of the way home in this one. As Majulis goes inside of Kendall Tucker, Tucker will drive away from him out of turn two down the back straightaway. It's in second now. Watkins and Trammell battled it out side by side for the third spot. Racetrack starting to change a little bit as we approach lap number 30. Kendall Tucker goes up to the top side. That time out of two down the back straightaway. Through three and four, he enters right through the middle and he'll hold it in the middle on the exit of four. 
Tucker's been strong in this one, but Julius trying to find a way to make up some ground on your leaders. Your leader catches a little bit of the concrete out of two down the back straight away. No harm, no foul. We stay green. Trammel back in third. Ian Watkins having a great battle as Watkins draws it off the wall to take that third spot back away from Trammel. But Glone in fourth, Ruggiero Jr. peeking to the outside of the top five. He sits in sixth after starting 10th. No less Troutman, Sam Mars, and Huey Quillen. That's your top 10. Working lap 30 of this 100 lapper. And top two have got a breakaway on the field. That battle continues to be excellent for the third spot right now. Trammell's got it in the one car as Ruggiero's moved into new battle. Trammell in third. Here comes Ruggiero. Matty Watkins back to fifth. Sixth is Watkins. Seventh is Lusk. That is the best race on the speedway. Your top two have broke away and Tindall. Kendall Tucker's got a five-tenths of a second advantage over Majulis. We're lap number 32. Here's off turn at number four. We focus on this battle for third because it is a dandy right now. It's Ruggiero from 10th to third at the line. Can he hold it? Here comes Trammell to his outside. Watkins in the fold as well. And oh, Watkins looks like he may go around. Caution on the speedway as Matty Watkins goes for a four-wheel free slide. And that's going to draw the Builder Designs caution with 34 laps complete and tough break right there. Matty Watkins had a good run going early in this one. See what happened. That one, McGlone and Trammell, and it looks like maybe the 41 car, McGlone got into the back of the Kentucky driver. Tough break for Brooks, excuse me, for Matty Watkins. He had a good run. We'll have another look at it on the instant replay. And yeah, a little bit of a love tap getting into the corner, and that's not where you want contact made. That turns that driver around. So working cautions now, 35 laps complete. It's Kendall Tucker, your leader. Blake Majulis in second. It was a two-car breakaway at the front of the pack before that caution flew. Ruggiero Jr., one to watch, 10th to third, and that dirt on dirt.com house car. Brooks traveling fourth, McGlone back in fifth. Pace truck is pulled to the infield. We are back underway. Yellow lights out, green back out on the speedway. Kendall Tucker got a slider from Majulis for the lead. Majulis goes to the top. He takes that group away through three and four. Who's going to win the drag race back to the line to complete lap 37? Tucker on the top, and Tucker will hold the lead. Majulis threw a big slider at him. And now another slider as the caution comes out. Come on, guys. we got to stay green. we got to hold the battle for the lead. And back in the pack, they're beating and banging on each other. His caution weighs with 37 laps in the book, 63 laps remaining. And Drew Hopkins goes around, and we had a hell of a battle going between Ken Tucker and Blake Vigila, Slide Job City. Caution on the speedway. Don't forget, first 50 laps, cautions will count once we get from 51 on. Not. So right now, these caution laps are counting as we come out of lap number 39. It's Kendall Tucker, your leader, Majulis in second. Brooks Trammell back in the third spot. Ruggiero Jr. in fourth. Then it's Musk in fifth. McGlone, Quillen, Sam Mars, Troutman, and Friedman. That's your top 10. About Austin Friedman now. He has come from 19th to 9th. Down driver trying to make some noise here at his home track, I should say, from about 10 miles down the road in Forest, Illinois. As lights are out, Green is on the speedway. We've got 40 laps complete, 60 to go. And Majula's going to throw another slider at Tucker. Tucker turns back down the hill. Good stuff right now for the lead. As Ruggiero Jr. and Trammell watching all unfold in front of them. And those two starting to reel in your top two cars. Good battle. Out of turn, number four, two down the back straightaway. It is Tucker, your leader. He'll let it drift to the fence. Caution back out, and these cautions are killing us right now, ruining the chance for good racing. 42 laps complete. Another caution flies here tonight at Fairbury. Again, cautions count for the first 50. After that, these caution laps will not count. Garrett Alberson and Drake Troutman getting together. A couple of real world elite model pilots getting together back there. That draws the Milner Nines caution. 43 laps complete. Probably uh, around 45 in the books by the time we go back green. And appreciate everybody tuning in here tonight. We'll take tomorrow night off. As you see, that's the green play. Drivers going around up in the corner, all kinds of contact. We'll be back in action Monday and Tuesday night. We'll go to Williamsburg Speedway for the Burnt Heisel Racing Products Late Model National Open. Check that out. And it looks like Stephen Calavoto, one of the race directors here tonight, has changed the restarts to single file. They're going to try that for a minute as these guys are really beating and banging on each other. 
Go to the green flag out of turn at number four with 45 in the books, 55 laps to go. Flag is out. We're back underway. We'll see if the slide jobs of the week continue. Nine at least for one and two as Majulis will follow Kendall Tucker through the cushion. They work off two and down the back straightaway. Both drivers head to the low side for three and four. Let it drift wide. Tucker much wider than Majulis. Really makes it work now with 46 laps complete. Back in third is Ruggiero Jr. Fourth is Trammell. Fifth is McGlone. Top two continue to be the class of the field dropping away from the pack. As we said on Monday and Tuesday night, we head to Williams Grove Speedway. And old Mike Norris to join me. Mike, the voice of Fairbury Speedway, did his first ever iRacing event last night in the Mods with Tommy Rowe Jr. and Team BLR. Chris told me if he went all right, he might join me next week. So hopefully we can get Mike on the call and some of this action to join us for fun. Appreciate everybody supporting us, everybody having a good time, and giving us real-world guys a shot at the virtual racing. It's a learning curve. We make some mistakes, but, man, we have some fun. And I definitely want to thank Todd Stanton and everybody at Full Velocity Racing Network for doing a great job producing these shows so we can air them live on Facebook and make it a lot easier. Well, as we work off turn number four, we're halfway home. 50 down, 50 to go from here on out. The caution laps will not count. And I tell you what's about to make it really good. Your leaders are catching the back of the pack. Five car lengths behind two and three wide lap traffic. But boy, James Essen would say, please stay green, because it's about to get entertaining. Tucker goes to the top still. Who can work on still to put him down a lap? But Julius down low, working lap 52 through three and four. Three wide through lap traffic. Up top, it's Tucker. But Julius through the low side. We got 52 in the books, 48 to go. And your leaders are working heavy lap traffic, and this one's going to be really entertaining if we can stay green. Hero Jr. rides back in third, Brooks Trammell in fourth. Heavy lap traffic, Sam Mars right in front of your leaders. The two car strips right there as well. If you're Kendall Tucker, you got to keep your nose clean, but you got to stay in the loud pedal because you got heavy company behind you. 54 laps in the books, 46 to go. And we're tap dancing through traffic as Troutman bounces off the concrete right in front of your leaders. Lap traffic can have a drastic impact on the outcome of this one. Tucker through the middle of traffic, but Julius up top. Ruggiero Jr. right there, he's starting 10th, he's in third, he's in the fold. Meanwhile, Tucker with a slider on Sam Mars, that's gonna give your leader a little bit of time to breathe. And now Sam Mars, a slider on your leader, but he leaves him a lane out there, and that's a good thing, that could have been a bad thing. As out front, Kendall Tucker and Blake Majulis working through lap traffic masterfully. They work around to complete lap number 57. 57 to go, 43 in the books off turn number four. And third, it's Ruggiero Jr. Trammell back and forth, McGlone in fifth, and it's Huey Quillen. It'll be Austin Friedman in seventh from 19. Eighth is Lusk, and ninth is Fauntleroy. Tenth is Kane Lowney. He's turning back in 20th. Some movers and shakers in this one as we approach lap number 60, working lap 58 off turn number four. More traffic for your leaders. Good work on Brad Dyer, car 56. Dyer down low, out of the way. 59 laps now complete. Next time by, we'll have 40 laps remaining as Dyer closes in. Excuse me, as Dyer goes down a lap to your leader, Kendall Tucker. But Julius in second. Back in third is Ruggiero. Trammell holds on to fourth. McGlone in fifth. Top side the place to be right now. But now Tucker's got to make some decisions. And can Majulis throw a slider as Albertson bounces off the concrete right in front of Tucker. Tucker will turn down the hill. Slider to go around Albertson. We want Majulis to the inside of the speedway. Battle for the lead off two down the back straightaway. Off into turns three and four, side by side for the lead. Good stuff, more lap traffic in front of your leaders. Kendall Tucker trying to pick up his first win of the year over Majulis. He said Majulis is beating him every time they've been on the track up until last night's prelim. Tonight he's trying to pick up a $250 payday. He goes work on the 119 car of Bud Watson, an Ohio driver. And now Watson stays up top. That allows Tucker to head to the low side. That's where Majulis goes as well. Working lap number 64, so two car breakaway. Those two drivers have a 2.2 second advantage over third place winner John Ruggiero Jr. Then it's Trammell, Quillen, Austin McGlone, Austin Friedman in seventh. Now he falls back to eighth as Lusk goes to seventh. Friedman in eighth, ninth is Paul Roy, Kane Cloudy rides in tenth. And it's Corey Gordon from 22nd to 11th. The work through lap traffic, clicking off laps. Off of turn at number four, they complete lap number 66, 34, four laps left to go here. We're in honor to Hillard Miller here tonight in Fairbury. They work off of turn number four, and it is all Kendall Tucker. 
He holds a four tenths of a second advantage over Malik Majulis, and Majulis is going to do something. He's got to start thinking about it. And just as I say that, he may have heard me. He comes after your leader. Your top two, racetrack starting to change. A little bit of searching for those two. Could this play into Majulis' hand, or is Kendall Tucker saving it? And Caution is out. Caution on the speedway with 68 laps complete. And we get a second to catch our breath with 32 laps remaining here tonight in Fairbury. And your leader is North Carolina's Kendall Tucker. Bryce Fonelroy brings out the caution. The Louisiana driver in car number 68. That regroups the field. 68 laps in the books. Racetrack starting to change, getting slick top to bottom, and that is making things interesting as Majulis will start to close in on Kendall Tucker. Now they'll have a clean racetrack. Worth noting, looks like 24 of the 25 starters still on. Lap traffic again could become. Well, if you think Kendall Tucker is going to get the win tonight, the, year, the double zero, give me a thumbs up. If he gets to be the 127 of Blake Majulis, give me the smiley face. I want to know who you think is going to win if you're watching in the chat rooms. For 600 people tuned in tonight, whether you be watching on the DirtOnDirt.com Facebook chat room, the, high, the Full Velocity Racing Network chat room, or the MSR Mafia, or tonight the Team VLR, I want to know who you think is going to get it done. It's been Kendall Tucker or Blake Majulis stalking him. 68 laps complete. It's set to go back green. I think next time out of turn four, 32 laps left on the board and a lot of thumbs up. A lot of people believing it's going to be Kendall Tucker getting the win tonight, but timing in. Hello, once he sets Majulis. I don't know, guys. A lot of thumbs up. A lot of people think it's going to be Kendall Tucker. They think Tar Heels are getting the win here tonight. Michael Rigsby's home track, huge Duke fan. It's got to break his soul to think about somebody that could be a Tar Hill fan winning at Fairbury. Unthought of as we go back green. Rigsby was in here earlier tonight. Saw Brandon Shepard log in. Clint Dahl from Firethorn Marketing. It's been fun to see everybody checking out these iRacing events. And we'll be back at it Monday and Tuesday. Anyway, the program presented by Burn Heisel Race Products. Here to tune in. It'll be live on the Dirt on Dirt Facebook page, the MSR Mafia and Velocity. Have those times coming up. We'll be going live at 8 o'clock p.m. Central time on. It will give you updates, though. Go to the ML Performance iRacing Crown Jewel Series Facebook page. We're clicking off laps, and right now, if you Kendall Tucker, you're looking pretty smart because there is a lot of just putting some distance between himself in second place. Seven tenths of a second as Caution is back out with 71 laps complete. Got one upside down. That is Cade Loudy. Kate Loudy on his roof. That Kirk's gonna have some work to do on that 126 car as he would fumble in that one. 71 in the books, 29 to go. And right now, top side of the racetrack becoming dominant in this one. Be interesting to see if any changes here in the closing laps. Dylan Ward, another one of the Fairbury faithful checking in here tonight. I know everybody's ultra ready to get back to Falls. Back to all these racetracks. Talked to Matt Curl yesterday in a phone call, the owner operator there at Fairbury Speedway, and he's making preparations, doing everything he can to get the season underway. And when it does, make the most of it. And of course, get ready for the Fairbury Dirt Classic. And of course, this Falls Frenzy coming up later in the year. And we want to thank Dyer's Top Rods from Forest, Illinois, about 10 miles from Fairbury Speedway, for being the title sponsor of this event, the presenting sponsor, I should say, this event. We want to thank all of our great sponsors as well. So many people possible. We thank Bulletproof Tees, Burn Heisel Racing Components, Laser Chassis, NB Suspension, Dirt Draft, Collins Signs, s &J Motorsports, SRI Performance, Draco Racing, Weir's Machine Racing Products, Hooker Trucking, and iRace Wrap on Builder Media Designs. All the great sponsors here tonight with 29 laps remaining and it's been Kendall Tucker, large and in charge for much of this event. He leads them off of one and two. Up top, down in one and two, down in turns three and four. He likes the bottom side of his speedway one of the best in the business trying to stalk him around this racetrack right now. Blake Majulis, the winner of Wernerville Speedway. Kendall Tucker, the points leader, entering tonight. Lewis in tonight's event, buried a little bit further back in the points, back in 18, trying to make up points here tonight. Lewis did not have a good outing in Volusia a week ago tonight, and now he closes in on your leader, Kendall Tucker, and everybody with the smiley faces. This is, this is what I was talking about. Majulis is going to get him. 
They work down the back straightaway. They race back to 25 to go side by side for the lead. They're approaching left traffic. Slider for the lead off four. Drag race back to the left. New leader. Will it be? Can it? Yes, sir, it will. Third different leader. Majulis to the lead. And now Kendall Tucker's got his work cut out for him. As he inches ahead, tries to take the lead. Now he catches the wall down the back straightaway. Majulis takes over the top spot. They race back now with 24 laps to go. And they're catching lap traffic. Let's keep this one green as Majulis catches the concrete through concrete through one and two. And that allows Tucker to pull in. Tucker's slider for the lead. Majulis back to his inside. Kendall Tucker back to the lead with 23 to go. And it is a classic showdown at Falls right now. Showcase at Falls, as my good buddy Mike Morris would say, as we approach 20 to go. Oh, contact between your top two. And they're approaching lap traffic. Lap traffic could be a huge impact on this one. Ruggiero Jr. rides back in third, as right now they're side by side for the lead. 22 laps to go, four wide through lap traffic. Tucker can't get where he needs to be. 21 to go. Tucker inches back to the lead, Majulis to his inside. They work out of two down the back straightaway, the back stretch crazies on their feet as they race off into three and four. We've got just 20 laps to go in this 100 lapper as we got contact behind them, lap cards getting together. 20 laps remain. And now Kendall Tucker is in protect mode as he has changed his groove. He's gone from the top to the bottom, down to one and two and three and four. He'll drift it up to the cushion, catches the cushion. 19 laps remain. 19 laps remain and Caution is on the speedway. Caution is out and damn it, a Caution just ruined our really good one. It sets up unofficially a 19 lap dash to the checkers with Kendall Tucker leading the way over Majulis, John Ruggiero Jr., Brooks Trammell, Huey Quillen, that's your top five. Then Joe Luskin, sixth. Talented young man, Austin Friedman, doing the home crowd proud. Back in seventh, eighth is McGlone, ninth is McLaughlin. Barry Sauter rounds out your top 10. Let's get an official, official count. Like roughly 19 laps left to go. Chris Smokey Matt tuning in tonight. Good to have Chris tuning in to watch with us. Cool to see all these drivers tuning in to see what's going on. How many go? We've 19 laps left to go. Kendall Tucker leads the way. Blake Majulis in second. This is Giro Jr., Brooks Trammell, and Huey Quillen. And tonight on the Full Velocity Racing Network, shout out to my producer, Todd Stanton, doing a great job here tonight. My name is Ben Shelton on the call, having a great time. I appreciate everybody having me here. A lot of folks turned it, tuned in. We're getting ready to go green. I'm going to ask you again. If you think the double zero of Kendall Tucker is going to win, give me the thumbs up. If you think it's going to be Blake Majulis, give me the smiley faces. I want to see who thinks who is going to win in this one tonight as we've got just 19 to go and we're back underway in falls. Kendall Tucker heads to the low side. Majulis goes to the cushion. What's left of it? Can he get momentum off of turn number two down the back straightaway? Now they'll both head to the bottom, bottom side in three and four. Tucker lets it drift wide and Caution comes out again. Cautions are killing us, guys. Cautions are killing us as we got a hell of a race shaping up here and we get a caution every lap. What we've got there on the Builder and Designs instant replay. Barry Sauter involved in that one. I have 18 laps to go. We go back to the green flag and it is Kendall Tucker. Majulis tried to pound that top side, but it has burned up that cushion. Great racetrack from Chad Bowman here tonight. The mastermind behind Falls and the race prep. Can't wait to be back there joining those guys here in the very near future. All right, so get them all sorted out. Barry Sauter to the back of the pack. Kendall Tucker, your leader. Majulis has led a little bit. Trammell led early in this one. Dang, wait to be drinking iced coffee, but that's what you do when you're in your office and out to an iRacing event right on a, well, damn it, it's Saturday night, isn't it? On a Saturday night, as we get set to get this one back underway, 18 to go. Hope you guys have had a good time tonight. We really appreciate everybody tuning in here tonight. Adam Metz and the gang, all these falls, faithfuls. Can't wait to see you guys, man. Ready to be back there. Pace truck pulls to the infield, 18 laps to go. We're going to go green off four. Kendall Tucker, your leader. Tony Hamilton, thanks for tuning in tonight. And a great turnout as we are back underway now with just 18 laps to go. Double zero leading the way in this one. Kendall Tucker has been tearing it up here tonight. And he leads the way. Racetrack changing a ton. Chad Bowman and Troy Farney in the game getting the racetrack. Gracie, it falls. And now the double zero goes to the top side down in one and two. 
off of turn number two. He's going to head back to the bottom. Majulis is trying to find anything he can to get back to the lead. Off turn number four, 15 laps remain. And now Majulis trying to steal it away from the double zero car of Kendall Tucker side by side for the lead. They work off turn number four, a little beaten and bang and half a car like now make it 15 to go. 15 more times around this speedway as the racetrack has slicked up top to bottom. They work off turn three and four. 14 laps remain. He'll catch the concrete will Majulis. Ruggiero Jr. back in third, Trammell in fourth. The Falls frenzy is going crazy as, as Austin Freeman has gone 19 to fifth. A couple more cautions. The youngster may work his way into an 89. Running out of time, though, as they work off turn at number four. And now Majulis, he's going to dial it down low. Can he make the hub work? Up top, the double zero car continues to be your leader of Kendall Tucker. Side by side for the lead. They race off turn number four, duking it out. Can we have a replay of last year's Prairie Dirt Classic? You saw it when Pierce led almost the whole race, and then Shepard got him out of turn number four at the line. Could we be setting that up? Could we stay green? We've got just 11 laps to go, make it 10 off turn number four. And now Majulis ducks down to the inside. Majulis and, and trying to work the inside. Tucker works right through the middle. Watch it be. They work off turn number four, 10 to go. 10 to go this time by Ruggiero Jr. has driven a great race back in third. We'll talk to your top three when this one's over. Top three interviews when this one's over. Don't go anywhere. They're catching the tail of the field. Traffic could be a factor now. Cover this one if we stay green. Nine laps remain. They tiptoe around the cushion. Kendall Tucker misses it. He gets over the cushion down in one and two. But Jules closes in on him. They close in on traffic. Traffic's three wide in front of him. Eight laps to go. Beating and banging on turn four. By half a car length, it's Kendall Tucker. Let's let this one stay green, boys. Let's decide it in lap traffic for $250 for the bragging rights here tonight from three and four. Slider for the lead off turn number four. Blake Majulis to the lead. He leads with seven to go. Kendall Tucker now has got to try to find a way back into the top spot. Running out of time. Side by side for the lead. Tucker and Majulis duking it out through the cushion. Off turn number four at the line contact. Kendall Tucker to the lead. Majulis back in second. Race around this time off turn number four. Heavy lap traffic. Heavy traffic for your leaders. Five laps to go. Five to go, and it's Kendall Tucker. He's working the low side. Majulis is up top. Who is it going to be? And cautions on the speedway. Caution flies with just a handful of laps left to go here tonight in Fairbury. Caution on the speedway as we are going to have a showdown to the checkered flag. It has been a dandy here tonight at Falls. And Kendall Tucker leads the way for Blake Majulis. Those guys have been trading it back and forth. And we have got a showdown to the line. I believe five laps remain. Trades for the lead. What more could you ask for? Good to see Tim Drindle, another one of the Falls faithful in here. Zach Schaefer, Falls faithful. We know it's not like being at Fairbury and having a little bit of that black dirt in your beer and hearing Mike Norris on the call and the great track from Troy Farney and Chad Bowman, but this is the next best thing. We're glad you're with us here tonight. Guys, we have got a five lap shootout to the checkers. And I wanna know if you're in the chat, give me a thumbs up. If you think it's gonna be Kendall Tucker in the double zero, give me the, give me the smiley face. You think it's gonna be the 127 of Blake Majulis. As we come back to the green, perhaps the final restart of the night. And they're at the line. They both head off into turns one and two. They've been the class of the field all night. Five laps remain. They work down the back straight away. Through turns three and four. Kendall Tucker gets a much better run off the corner than Majulis does. Four to go, four more times around. Fair, very speedway here tonight for all the bragging rights. Tucker, he's got that group figured out right now. Three to go. His mom's in the chat room. So she's having a heart attack right now watching her son trying to keep Majulis behind him. Race back now. Just two to go out of turn number four. Kendall Tucker is stretching it out. He's got two quarter mile laps to go. Can he make it happen? Can Majulis spoil it here tonight? He closes in on Tucker. They hustle it down the back straightaway. Off into three and four. White flag in the air. One more time around the speedway. Who's it going to be tonight in Fairbury? Off into turns three and four. Excuse me, off into one and two. 
Tucker lets it drift high, and Majulis down low, and that actually was the checker. That was the checker there, guys. I got snookered a little bit. Kendall Tucker picks up the win. Blake Majulis in second. Ruggiero Jr. in third. Friedman comes home in fourth, and Brooks Trammell in fifth. As we got snookered right there at the end, your winner here tonight is going to be Kendall Tucker in the double zero. He comes to us out of Mount Airy, North Carolina, the Swindell Speed Lab, Bell Helmets, K1 Race Gear Entry. Your points leader is going to add to his advantage as he picks up the win, and we are going to talk to him, Blake Majulis and John Ruggiero Jr. Fourth was Austin Freeman from Knight Brooks Trammell. Sixth was Corey Gordon and Drew Hopkins, Caleb McLaughlin, Barry Sauter, and Huey Quillen. Your winner, $250 richer here tonight, was Kendall Tucker. Talk to him about that one as we will up into the broadcast room. And Kendall Tucker, you told me after you won your prelim last night that you had not beat Blake Majulis all How nerve wracking was this feature at Fairbury. Oh man, that was that was crazy. Uh, he threw everything at me with the kitchen sink right there, but uh just he got by me there a couple times and I was luckily able to sneak back Vaughn both times right there. I've I've never really seen the bottom come in like that that late in the race so uh that, that was pretty cool i saw him kept duck, uh, sticking his nose up under me right there and uh i don't know just was able to when i went down there was able to make it stick i just kept it off the tires and there was a lot of moisture off so i mean i, I could see why he was making it work so uh i didn't know how long it was going to work but i just <laughs> i figured that the safe bet was probably to be on the top on the restarts for as long as i could and uh you know he he slid me a couple times right there, but we, we beat and banged a little bit right there. We tried to make it entertaining for y'all back home watching, so uh, I'm just glad that's over. I'm ready to get drunk. Hey, man, I got to ask you. He, you've talked about it. He spoiled your party so many times this year when you know he's behind you and these cautions keep come, going out. What's going through your mind? I just I was trying to keep my keep my cool right there. Uh, you know, he's one of the best in the business right there, and I feel like I am too. I just I don't run late models much anymore. It's been chasing after the, the Pro Sprint Car Series here the last probably three or four months so uh you know i feel like i can still get the job done in these as long as uh we got a fast piece underneath of us so uh I'm just glad we was able to get done for 100 laps you had mama tucker and everybody else going crazy in the chat room rooting for you who would you like to thank tonight yeah just all my guys over at swindell speed lab again you know shout out to blake uh, that was a heck of a race uh and i had thanks to mike mckinney he was spotting for both of us right there so he said it was pretty entertaining to watch spotting for both of us he kept telling us uh, to not try and take each other out but uh you know we're both we're both going for the win right there and was able to keep it clean so that, that was good fun thanks to mike for spotting uh i gotta thank k1 race gear bell helmets racing electronics uh south bay partners hms motorsport and uh, all my family and friends for watching uh thanks to all the guys for putting the league on thanks to the vlr admins for coming here and uh keeping everything straight and uh, like always thanks to you for broadcasting and uh, Todd Stanton and all the guys at Full Velocity Racing Network for putting this stuff on and uh, everybody at Dirt on Dirt we need to get Riggs being here one night being can we make that happen <laughs> he Riggs was be? watching tonight so he was taking we're getting him closer Kendall well I tell you what buddy you you you, pal, you uh, pad your points advantage with a win tonight we will see you in a few days at Williams Grove all right man sounds good congratulations Kendall Tucker gets the win tonight we'll bring now Blake Majulis in, and Blake, man, you threw everything at him but the kitchen sink. What what were you going to have to do differently to get the win at the end? Uh, I don't I don't even know. I just had everything perfect and all squared up, and yellow came out at the wrong time, and he had to leave. Just unfortunate luck, I guess. I don't really think there was much I could do different, really, in that scenario. But, um, you know, it was a good race start, start to finish. Uh, it's just hard to make anything happen at this racetrack with you know the bottom goes away so fast and i finally found it and uh, got got by him twice and yellow came out both times but uh, just unfortunate luck well still a great night for you blake you you won at, at Warnerville a couple of days ago you win tonight who would you like to yeah just uh, my whole team swindell speed lab uh, sim seats uh design 75 uh Jeremy Ray for everything he does for me and uh, the rap. Can't thank him enough. Uh, you guys for broadcasting, of course. Thank you. Everyone that watched, uh, my girlfriend Tia for helping uh, all the time. And uh, thank you very much. Hey, right, well, congratulations. Blake Majulis comes home in second. We are going to grab now, bring up John Ruggiero Jr. As he finished third. Well, John, you started 10th. You got to third. You had one heck of a front row seat for an amazing race in front of you. Was there ever a point where you thought you might be able to find something for the leader? Um, 
so you're right about the front row seat. Them guys put on a great show, and I really enjoyed being able to ride behind them and watch. Granted, yeah, I wanted to win, but um, you're always learning on this game. Uh, it's a lot different than in real life, but it's very close. I give the game a lot of credit. I absolutely admire what they've done here. And when you ride behind guys like Blake and Kendall, who are really, I mean, they're just top tier in this uh, game, or, you know, Sim, it was really cool to ride behind them, watch. Uh, there for a minute, when we were behind some lap cars, I kind of got close, and I thought for a second there I might be able to kind of throw my throw my hand in there and see what I had. But um, at the end of the day, they were just better than me, and that's why I give them a lot of credit, and hats off to them too. Uh, they kept their cars clean, did a great job, and I tried to do the same, and that's why I'm extremely happy to be coming home third, especially wearing the old dirt-on-dirt dirt, uh, wrap. So that was also an honor to run that, and hopefully I did you guys pretty good. Uh, you did a great job. It was fun watching you tonight. Who would you like to thank? Um, I'd like to thank uh, Matt Logan, first of all, for uh, putting this deal on. I think it's a really cool event, and um, I'm really looking forward to the next few weeks. Uh, i got to thank you guys for broadcasting this deal. Once again, that's awesome uh, for people that obviously are in this crazy time in the world. They get to get on Facebook and uh, watch some virtual racing, which, in my opinion, puts on a great show, and I really hope the fans enjoy what they saw tonight. Uh, I got to thank my mom and my dad. Uh, without them, I wouldn't be able to race in real life, and I sure as heck couldn't race on this sim. So uh, other than that, I really don't have anyone else to thank. Well, I tell you what, great job tonight, John, and we'll see you in a couple of days over at Williams Grove. Yes, sir. Hope you guys have a good one. Thank you, sir. You too. I tell you what, I'm going to try. I don't know if he's still on here, but I see he's in the main lobby. Todd, one more interview I'm going to try to dra drag down here. And let's... Uh, Austin, can you hear me? Yeah, I got you. There you go. Austin, you go 19th to 4th at your home track tonight. Of course, talking to Austin Freeman, driver of the 89 car. You did Falls Proud, and uh, how much fun did you have tonight? Yeah, that was fun. I mean, from the B main up there to 4th, that was pretty amazing. One out there, and did you ever, would you ever dream on a Saturday night? Of course, cr things are crazy right now, but you'd be racing Fairbury, and there's, there's close to 1,000 people watching on the Internet, but you're doing it on a video game. Would you ever dream that? Uh, not really. I mean, trying to start up this year, we're going to try to race the first time, so might have the same experiences. I tell you what, it was fun watching tonight. I just wanted to bring you in real quick, tell you a great job. 19th to 4th, and I look forward to seeing you. Yep, thanks. Thanks for putting this on. It's really fun. Absolutely. Well, we want to thank you and your family and Dyer's Top Rods, everything you guys do, and we appreciate it. And, Austin, well, like I said, we'll see you uh, on, coming up on Monday night. Yep, thank you. See you then. Sir. Well, Todd Stanton, that wraps it up tonight. Again, want to thank everybody that tuned in. Want to thank all of our great sponsors. Want to thank Todd Stanton and the Full Velocity Racing Network for doing a fantastic job producing. We're going to take tomorrow off. We'll be back Monday and Tuesday night. We'll be live on the Dirt on Dirt Facebook page, the Full Velocity Racing Na Network fa Facebook page, the MSR Mafia, and maybe a couple other places. So make sure to tune in. You can go to the ML Performance iRacing Crown Jewel Series Facebook page for more information, how to get involved in future races. Again, thanks so much, everybody that watched tonight, everybody that supported it. Please be safe, everybody, and we will see you on Monday. Good